tutorial is going to look at the Pilates roll up and roll down. This exercise always comes with so many questions. So hopefully we can break it down today, make it seem a little bit more understandable, a little bit less intimidating, um, and hopefully it will be an exercise that you look forward to and that you feel the benefits of instead of fearing and just waiting for it to be over in a class. So let's break down the roll up. The first thing I would say that a roll up and down on the mat is exactly the same as a roll down and a roll up from standing. So let's break that down to begin with. If we're standing and we roll down, we let the head come forward, the shoulders roll forward and the arms reach long out in front and the torso, your upper body is rolling around your thigh bones. To come back up, we start to roll the pelvis here around the thigh bones and then we step the spine all the way back up to the top. The key thing to remember here is that when we're rolling down, those shoulders roll forward, the spine makes the C shape. And we're not worried about pulling our abdominal muscles in super tight to allow us to come down to the floor. If anything, the opposite. So now let's take that to the mat. One of the most important things I would like everyone to know about the roll up and the roll down is that it is not an abdominal strength exercise. Actually, sometimes it's almost the opposite. You will feel your abdominal muscles working because they are in the same way that if you were to really think about it when you were out on a walk, you would feel your abdominal muscles working because they are. But I want you to put your abdominals to one side because when we focus on the abdominals in a roll-up, often they block us. The roll-up is a spinal articulation exercise. So we're moving the spine that way and that way. And it's a breathing exercise. Let's break that down on the mat. So when we're sitting tall, I like to give you the idea that you're rolling your pelvis around your thigh bones. So that starts to create this C shape right from the pelvis and you can come down into the mat. You might have heard, push your legs down into the mat or keep your legs where they are. And I don't like to cue you to keep things too stuck or too still or too steady because that's gonna create resistance when what we're looking for is a really beautiful fluid motion. All right, so imagine the legs are being sent away from you and your pelvis is moving away from your legs. Your legs are going to slide a little bit on the mat, that's normal. And as you come down, actually what needs to happen is your hip flexors and your abdominal muscles need to get longer. You can see that they're lengthening to let you down on the mat. Sometimes when we roll down and we pull, 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 we're shaking, we're gripping, and it feels like we come down in a big chunk, especially around that mid-back and that upper back. And it's the same when we roll forwards. I want you to imagine what it would feel like to roll up and down while wearing a corset, one of those super tight corsets right around your ab, your abdominal muscles, right around your abdomen. When we pull our abdominal muscles in, or what you might think is engaging your core, you're doing the same thing to your spine. You're bracing it. You're holding it in a fixed position so that it can't roll efficiently. Then that creates the cycle of us thinking, well, I must be so weak in my core that I just can't get myself up. I just can't get up there. I need to engage my core more. And now we're in this cycle. Your core is getting in the way, but you think it's weakness and you pull your core in more, all right? So when we're rolling up, which is really the challenge, yeah? I like you to think, can we create length in the body first? So we're reaching out with the fingers and out with the toes. And then I like you to imagine that you're lying on a big sheet. You're gonna pick the sheet up over your head and that's gonna take your head with you. And when you lift the head, we're looking right down at the front of the pelvis. And then we use that to pull ourselves up. So what we're doing when we roll up like that is accessing the tension in the back of the body to come up. Because actually what we're doing is lengthening the back of the body to roll up into the seated position 
And then we lengthen the front body to return. Lengthen the back body to come forward. That's where we may feel a stretch in the hamstrings or in the back. And we lengthen the front body to come down, which is where we might feel those hip flexors starting to pull if they're maybe experiencing some tightness and they don't want to let go. The other thing I hear a lot of is when I'm rolling up, I really feel it in my neck. And this is something I hear quite a lot because what people will try to do is this. We're going to try and roll up, but I'm going to try and keep my shoulders back and down. Okay, now, now I'm lifting, and maybe you can even see here, oh, my core is shaking. And I'm trying to come up, but it's all neck. I might get myself there, but I try to hinge myself up by keeping my shoulders pinned back and down, and I haven't allowed for that roll up. It, I think it comes from years of being told about how to have better posture. That Never should we have a rounded spine. We should keep our spine flat, our shoulder blades pinned back and down, and that's how we create great arm movements or great rib movements, by pulling the shoulder blades back and down. That's stable and that's strong. When in fact, the actually the opposite is true. We need to have movement to our shoulder blades. We need to be able to round the spine and extend the spine and twist and to turn the spine in order to be able to really move the arm well and to do all of these exercises. So when you're rolling down, you're rounded, and then we start to lengthen out. And then when we come up, really think about rolling the shoulders forward. If I pull my shoulders back, it's much harder. I cannot round. It gets in my way. If I reach my fingers for it and I round my spine, now I'm going to be able to come up really well. The other thing I want you to keep in mind for your day-to-day -day life is that your upper spine is rounded. It's what we call a kyphotic curve. You, we all learn in school at some stage that your spine rounds out at the top, in at the bottom, and out at the tailbone. That's why when we lie back on the mat, we feel that our upper back relatively easily presses into the mat, but that our lower back often there's a gap. Now, some of us will have spent years trying to fix our posture. I know I experienced this, and I even experienced this in some Pilates teachers' training, where we were told ribs down with flat back. The way that I would love you to move is to forget all of those rules and start to access that really great quality movement in your body. So much of the time when we get stuck, we're just getting in our own way. Let's have a look at the breathing in the roll up and the roll down. When we roll down, we're allowing ourselves to just lie the spine down onto the mat. When you roll up, we need a really big breath out. And then down. What often happens is, and I bet this might be happening to you if you are struggling with this exercise, is we'll get to here and we'll go, Bleh. and maybe we come up to one side, grabbing onto our legs. And I want you to think about the need for you to exhale, for your diaphragm, that breathing muscle, to come up, for your abdominal muscles to come in, and for your ribs to turn down. So that's going to help us coming up. So many of us aren't accustomed to breathing while moving like this. So I always recommend that you sing or that you hum. Um, and I often joke that it looks really easy for me doing it on camera, often because I'm talking to you while I'm doing it. Sometimes I struggle with this on my own in my own practice. Um, for songs, sing whatever you like. I like Row, Row, Row Your Boat um, because it's nice and melodic. Everyone knows it. Or you just hum, you hum. And that's going to make sure that you breathe throughout the exercise. Again, the roll up is a breathing exercise and a spinal articulation exercise where we're moving into this rounded shape. We're bringing the shoulders forwards with us. We want to avoid pulling the tummy muscles tight because they're going to get in your way. Forget about this, and I promise you, you will roll up with a little bit more ease. Sometimes another thing that I hear is bend the knees and it's easier. Well, that's true on the way down, 
But for me, it's actually more challenging to roll up with bent legs because your lever isn't as long. When you're coming up here, you've got a bit more room to maneuver. That long leg is weighing you a little heavier into the floor. What I would suggest is keeping your legs long and pushing down into your heels. So as we roll up, those heels almost pull and then reach. So you're gonna access the back of your body just a little bit more to help you come up. I also often recommend that you take your feet against your wall and you push into the wall to help give you that leverage to come up or you grab a towel or one of those therabands if you've got it, a scarf, a pair of tights, anything you've got to hook around your feet and use them to slow you down and then to pull you up. You might even bend the elbows to come up. That's absolutely fun. The other thing that I like to do, just like I showed you at the stretch, to get better at roll ups and down on the mat, is to really roll up and down consciously from standing. It'll help you find your spinal shape, help you to relax your abdominals, encourage your body to get used to that range of motion, so that when you take it to the mat, it's a little bit easier. 